It's pretty, pretty perfect for some foxing, according to Lord Lupton. As usual, Roy is keeping the odds in his favour and is doubling up this morning, looking for a fallow doe for the freezer and some pre-frozen foxes themselves in need of a meal. We're back out and uh, we're going to finish up our doe call, hopefully, today and maybe pick up the odd fox. And it is the perfect, I mean, absolutely perfect morning for calling foxes. The only way it could be any better is if we had a good covering of snow. But everything is, uh, is white. We've had a, a superb frost. It was about minus three, minus four last night. So stalking through the woods is going to be a bit crunchy. But for calling foxes this morning, if anybody's out there and they didn't get a meal last night, they are going to be incredibly hungry and should really give us a good response. Shooting with Roy is his old friend Andy. He's more used to shooting shotguns and shells than rifles and bullets, although he's got plenty of ammunition against the postman, whom he's known for more than 20 years. Andy does a lot of shotgun shooting, not a lot of rifle shooting, so it could go very badly. Sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> trying to give you confidence before we start. <laughs> no, Andy has done a bit of rifle shooting with me before. Um, but he's getting into the sport a lot more and he wants to get his own rifle. So hopefully we'll uh, get him on with maybe a fox and a deer today. It's fox stop number one. As soon as Roy changes to the silver fox call, we get a response. A handsome dog fox comes to have a look. He stops 50 metres shy of Roy and 80 yards from Andy. Andy was given strict instructions about his arc of fire and this fox ain't in it. We're then joined by a darker and smaller vixen. Roy keeps them in play for five minutes. Neither of them hit the dip, which is where Roy hoped they'd give us a shot. He came in right in and he, he was staring, looking at me or trying to figure out what I was. But I just kept very still um, and, uh, and just tucked myself into uh, the little bit of cover I had there. Uh, and he couldn't make it out, but you know he was still there for quite some time just trying to figure out what was going on. And then he decided just to have a mosey, a mosey out. And I thought he was going to come right across the line of fire in front of um, David with the camera and Andy with the rifle. But he must have just picked up a little bit of sight of our uh, resident meerkat and decided to uh, walk off back down to the brambles so unfortunately we didn't get one on that and the second fox decided to hightail it back down in so we actually had a pair coming in there we had a, a dog and a vixen come up but you know love it superb response and again yeah even though we didn't get the shot it's still superb to see them was it a bit wet here david on the other side of the estate david refuses to drive the mitsubishi the extra 50 yards alongside the lake to park closer to the gate but then has to face the abuse. I would not take the mickey out of David in a little precious four-wheel drive. <laughs> Just... I'm not going to use this. You, <laughs> you, you, can use, you need to use this, David. Just because David didn't want to go over a little muddy patch. <laughs> I'll do it. A sensible piece. Well, as David is not really used to driving a four-wheel... No, come on. Come on. I, know, I was going to get onto something sensible. Come on. Ready? I used to drive your four-wheel drive you car. On the road? <laughs> As David's not used to driving a four-wheel drive off-road, he decided that it looked a little bit sticky here, so we've now got to try and stalk up to a group of deer through probably the worst conditions you could possibly imagine. And there was just a very fine layer of ice on top of this very muddy path. <laughs> it's just absolutely terrible. So if we do get into anything, it is going to be a miracle. Well, let's go and have a look. He is right, and there are no deer, and no foxes for that matter. Our last stop is a favourite. He is taking us to the patch where he had a fox pass right in front of us last spring. He is going to hide behind the same stump using Jack Pike's English oak jacket in order to look like part of the furniture. We've got a nice bank of brambles on the left hand side up the bank there. So if the fox trickles down, hopefully Andy can get a, 
a safe shot on that there. It could come along the valley here because there's some big, big stands of brambles about 150, 200 yards back there. So it could just come snaking through the valley. We've also got another big stand of brambles along an old railway line up to the right hand side. So it is a fantastic area for a fox laying up, especially this morning. Um, they're going to be hopefully catched up on top just in a little bit of, of sunny glade just trying to get the, the morning's first sun again the lighter call offers up nothing the rasp of the silver fox brings in one along the top but roy can't see it and then neither can andy roy might look like he has soiled himself but that's him straining to be invisible directly behind him is a vixen just six feet away a thinner Lupton might have revealed more fox, but we do see her take off. Moments later, the fox on the top reveals itself. Andy shoots, and it's all too fast for David, who is not even recording. It must be the cold weather. I think it was a vixen came running along this fence line here, and she stopped just there next to the fence, looked at me. And that's, again, no more than about two or three yards. So I was just tucked up here as I just turned to look at her. Obviously, that movement was enough to, for her to realise that I wasn't a big, nice, fluffy rabbit. Unfortunately, David's used to getting half an hour warning before a fox comes in with me, with me talking to him and pointing it out. So, um, unfortunately, I don't think David got that one on camera. So, uh, it's either that or Andy was a bit premature. Take from it what you will. But at least we got one. Andy is sent to retrieve his fox. The ex-high jumper chooses not to execute a Fosbury flop, but gracefully clears the deer fencing. <laughs> it will be. <laughs> it's a fine looking vixen, perfect for keeping the local population in check. If you can get on top of your foxes, now is the time to do it before obviously they go in <laughs> and start coming. Oh! And uh, the more vixens you can get now, the uh, obviously the more effective your population control is going to be. And we know we've got a lot more foxes in this valley. And it's often the way, especially when you've got a railway line going through a piece of land and you've got um, towns reasonably close you're always going to get a fresh feed of foxes coming through because the foxes will hunt along the railway lines and then if there's a vacant territory they'll slip into it so again you've just got to be constantly on the top of your game when you're foxing like this and making sure that you keep the numbers down. It has been a lovely morning no dear but it is always fascinating stuff getting to see how your quarry reacts to the conditions and the calls. <laughs>